8086 by Alain Caron. The house was as she remembered it, years older but neat, like the other bungalows up and down the block on the still busy street. The girl who answered the door was slender, with straight brown hair, the spitting image of her mother who stood beside her. You do not know me, the attractive red-headed woman began with uncharacteristic diffidence. But I used to live here. Oh, are you the daughter of Mrs. Livinghood, whom we bought the house from? The mother asked, intrigued by this unexpected visit. No, I go back farther than that, the visitor smiled. My folks sold the house to a family named Cameron. May I come in? Of course, the mother said, and she gently nudged the daughter aside so that the well-dressed businesswoman could gain entrance. The woman stopped just inside the living room when she saw the television set. The image on the screen was a familiar and a sadly one that might have been playing back in her days in this very house. We love the old black and white sitcom, the daughter spoke up. My mother loved Lucille Ball, the woman informed them. I think because she had red hair like her in those earlier Technicolor movies. I have red hair, too, with a little help. Can I get you a coffee or something? The mother offered. Fred will be coming home from work soon, but there's still time. I'd like a coffee very much, but first I must find out something. The mother and the daughter just looked with growing curiosity. Have, are you happy here? I mean, did you enjoy this house? The mother was quick with her answer. We love this house. It's small and the neighborhood probably isn't as safe as when you lived here, but it's a cozy home and we have no plans to leave it, if that's what you mean. The woman wanted to turn away. Her sadness was set in this. Her success had been that great since she left the humble surroundings and ultimately that unfulfilling. I must ask, a long time ago, when I was about your daughter's age, I left a school paper between two basement bricks, a paper with a prayer that I wrote as a homework assignment. It won first place, and I was so proud of it that I hid it where no one would find it. I hid it so well, I forgot about it myself until a few months ago. What kind of a prayer was it? The daughter wanted to know. It was a simple prayer that asked God to bless our little house, your house now, and my dad and mother and my brother and me. They're gone now. I'm the last one left. That's so touching, the mother said. But do you think your prayer is still there after all this time? I hid it very well. In the very far corner, behind the meter. Will you let me see? Can I go look with you? The daughter pleaded. Of course you can, the pretty woman returned. I'd be honest. I'll fix the coffee. The mother watched the unlikely pair head downstairs. Life was so full of pleasant surprises, she marveled. Even here at little 8086. It made her look forward to the day when Fred could afford to pay the bank off and the house would truly be there. The doorbell interrupted her reverie. Fred was home. She rushed to the door to tell him the story of their special visitor. He was as delighted as she was. As his wife made the coffee, he kept shooting hopeful glances at the landing to the basement steps. Momentarily, there were footsteps ascending, and his winsome daughter with a lovely woman. They were both crying as they held between them a discolored sheet of lined paper. It was there, Mom, <laughs> the teenager snuffled. This is my husband, Fred, the mother introduced. 
The red-haired woman covered her face, ashamed of her weakness, but proud of her sentimentality. She will let us keep the prayer, Ma. It is so beautiful, and it still applies to this house, our house. Will you let me read it out loud? If it's okay with, with Ms. The woman told them her name, and they recognized it at once. She had made that resounding a success of herself in her field. They all convened in the small living room for coffee and pastry to hear the daughter's recital of the long ago prayer. In a half hour, the woman was gone to catch a flight to San Francisco with the sad, comforting assurance that the prayer was safe and working. All was well at 8086.